and TikTok, live YouTube, live TikTok. So what I want to do here is just do a Q&A. So um, let's let some people log on as we just went live a few minutes late. Sorry about that. We're going to be having a real estate investing chat. So if you're watching the recording, what I'm going to do is talk about real estate investing, give my um, thoughts on the market, what's going on. And then I'm going to do a Q&A and answer questions is what I'm going to do. Um, there should be some people all joining here shortly. So. Get ready for that. Let's let the people go on. Uh, make sure to like this if you're just logging on and we're going to answer questions. So what I'm going to talk about real quickly, just got a notification for YouTube. Awesome. So what I want to talk about quickly is the market. The market is crazy, crazy hot right now. I just came out the YouTube video last week about it. Um, just came out the YouTube video last week about it and, and why. And I was on um, TikTok this morning and a bunch of people were saying, what's going to happen? You know, when's it going to crash? It's going to crash. You know, people condescendingly saying that it's going to crash. It always crashes. Um, people have short-term memory. So if you're just logging on, thank you. Make sure to like this video. If you're on YouTube, please like this and share this with anybody you know that is interested in real estate investing. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the market and then I'm going to do a Q and A. So get your questions ready. I got TikTok here. I got um, YouTube there. So answer your question or um, have your questions there ready and I will gladly answer them. Um, can't really see the question with that ring thing. I don't know if we're going to move that a little yeah. bit, um, but all right. So Share this and like this, please appreciate. So the market, um, it, it's hot right now and everybody's predicting a crash. Everybody's been predicting a crash for honestly, probably five years. I went up doing research on the video uh, with Anna. They were, I saw videos in 2018 crash this year, 2019 crash this year, 2020 crash. So everybody's been predicting a crash for a long time. I'm going to talk about why I don't think there's going to be a crash um, a a anytime soon and why, which might not be the smartest thing if I'm putting this out there for the public to see. Um, so if you're on uh, YouTube, let me know where you're from. Share this on Instagram or on um, TikTok. Stay here if you want. If you want to head over to my YouTube and ask questions, I will answer them there. So YouTube Faster Freedom, head over there if um, you want to ask questions and, and interact over there. So head over there. So, um, all right. So the market, the reason it's so hot is there's three main reasons. And again, I just did a little bit better of an edited TikTok or YouTube about this. Goodness gracious, I'm on some um, some platforms chatting, going back and forth. But anyways, um, it's for three, three main reasons. One, supply is super low and demand is super high. So that was, you know, supply being extremely low, demand being super high and interest rates being so low. All those three things work together makes it makes me struggle with the fact that there may or may not be a, a crash anytime soon. People just assume that 08 happens every 10 or 20 years, and that, that's just not the case. It's never happened before. 08 was the first and only real estate market crash that crashed the economy. That's never happened for you in the history of the United States. So it is not a common thing that happens. If you're just on YouTube, appreciate you. Make sure to like this. Um, ask your questions in the chat box and, and share this if you don't mind. So the fact that it's never happened before, except one time, um, and the fact that 08 happened, nothing right now is like 08. 08 happened because there was millions and millions of people living in houses they could not afford with subprime interest rates on their pro on their um, houses and they could not afford to live in them. So that's why um, the just affordability factor was whack, whack. That's what the kids say. It was way off. Um, so the fact that the affordability factor is in line right now, all the data supports that people can afford the houses that they're living in. We just went through COVID and everything seems to be doing pretty good still, if not the best ever. That was a little bit of sarcasm because real estate's doing the best ever it's ever done. Um, makes me think that there's not going to be a huge crash anytime soon um, because demand is not going to go away. Supply is getting worse which is, I guess, better for the real estate market. Um, supplier, if you're selling a house, supply is getting less and less every single month. There is less houses going on the market for the people that are looking. So the market's not going to crash if even things happen and unemployment goes up or interest rates even go up a little bit. If there's 100 people looking for one house, then obviously one or two or three or four or 10 of those 100 people all live in the same house, all want to buy it. They're going to overpay. Some of them are going to have access to cash. Some of them are going to do, you know, have different, you know, means to fund the deal that other people don't. So there's always going to be a price floor that's never going to go below when there's that many people looking to buy houses. And I don't 100 to one, maybe exaggeration, but not really in some markets. So um, we appreciate being here on YouTube. Uh, on YouTube, we're on TikTok as well. Um, head over to 
YouTube if you're on TikTok, if you want to answer your questions, doing a live Q&A. So start to fill up that chat box if you don't mind. That was my spiel on the market. So start to fill up the chat box if you don't mind with questions here on YouTube, and I will get to every single one that I can. All right, your question from Ashley. Should I sell one large rental property, 2,300 square foot, single family house, to buy two smaller rental properties like duplexes? So great question. So um, yeah, so Ashley's question is great. Should she sell a big property to buy two smaller properties? Um, give you a couple thoughts on that. First, uh, I would say the only reason you maybe do that if you're going to 1031 tax exchange, I would not pay taxes on a bigger property just to get into smaller properties. If you have equity in that property and if that property is cash flowing, I probably wouldn't mess with it. Um, if you have equity, maybe do a HELOC, a home equity line of credit, or even a cash out refinance. And you can take that. If it's a cash out refinance, that's tax-free money. You can take that and then leverage that to buy other properties or do other things with. So great question. Um, I would need to know a little more information, but I don't know that there's a right or wrong answer to that one. Um, it, it's kind of my thoughts on that. All right. Um, Christian said, I love the videos. They are helping. I'm going to try to start getting myself ready for doing real estate dreams started. I love that. That is awesome. Any other questions? If you're on YouTube, throw your questions in the chat box and um, make sure to like this video, please. If we get enough likes, I'm going to, me and Ian are going to do a big high five. So let's um, let's get as many likes as we can, please. Um, so what is section eight? So the question is, what is section eight? So section eight is government subsidized housing. The government is subsidizing, which means they are paying for a portion of all of something. Um, they're responsible for it. So it's government subsidized housing, someone that can't afford to pay rent because of a disability or because of a job status or because of several different factors. The government helps them pay their rent basically simply what it is. And the fact that the government involved means there's, you know, we're not going to go political here, but it means there is um, usually a little bit more red tape, more inspections, more. So it, it's a, it's a good thing for a lot of people. A lot of people, some people act, my surprise, some people take advantage of it. Most don't. It's a good thing. Um, the government is just helping people afford houses that they couldn't afford anyway. Um, and it's just government subsidized housing. Another uh, question, how do you choose areas to buy properties for family homes criteria? I love this. This question is, is what is our criteria for houses? And everyone needs to have this. If they don't, if you're on TikTok, go over to YouTube, Faster Freedom on YouTube. Go over there and ask your question. I see a lot of questions going on. So if you go to YouTube, I'll answer them there. So the question is um, from Iran is how, what is your criteria? You need to have criteria to look at when you're buying properties. You don't just want to say you're going to buy anything. So what we look for in St. Louis is we're looking for, um, you know, three bed, uh, two bath houses. We'll buy different, but our our goal is three bed, two bath houses in the price range of two to 400,000. That is our niche. That's a good niche for St. Louis. That's where we like to be. That's not to say we're not going to buy a $600,000 house. It's not to say we're not going to buy a $50,000 house, but we have a niche that we shoot for and um, that is what we spend most of our marketing dollars and, for, and effort on. So that, that is what we look for. It's important to have a niche. Your niche can change, but it's important to have a niche. All right. So um, a question, another question, uh, a couple good ones. Is now a good time to get started? Yes. Now is a great time to get started. Um, people, a lot of people are trying to time the market. Uh, go watch the beginning of this. I talked about my thoughts on the market and I have a YouTube video on it actually um, that we just released last week. But um, a lot of people are trying to time the market. That's that's not smart in my part because my opinion is the market's not going to crash or even dip for a while. Potentially a fender bender or dip, you know, or plateauing in the next couple of years, but it doesn't, there's not going to be Oh, it's not going to happen again. There's not going to be houses are going to be lose 30%, 40% of value in a year. And you can go on this big buying spree. So now is as good time as ever to buy, in my opinion, especially if you're buying at a discount, buying less than market price. So if you're buying less than market price and the market dips, you should be okay. So I think now's a great time. A lot of people are going to sit on the sidelines and wish they invested this year. Um, another question, does business model sit safe from a single family member LLC risk? Yes. Um, if your LLC is set up properly, you can be pretty well isolated um, from any risk. All right. If you're just on, if you're just getting on YouTube, make sure to like this video, please. How do you start with little to no money? Oh, it's almost like we planted that question. That's kind of what I do and talk about all the time is how to buy real estate with little to no money. Um, if you didn't know this, give this video a like and a share. So Last year, Faster House, our flipping company, bought 204 houses. We flipped 204 houses. A lot of them are wholesale. Some were cleaning lists. Some were actually rehab and flipped. But we didn't use any of our own money to do that. Uh, we have access money, but we didn't use it. And I personally own, with Lucas, a $13 million rental portfolio that I've used zero of my own dollars to buy. 
and acquire. So the point of saying all that was to say, you can do this with little to no money. I've done it. When I got started, I didn't have much money in my bank account. We use other people's money the entire time. So how do you do that? So I just shot it. I'm going to give you the, I'm going to give you the clip notes versions, but Anna and I just shot a YouTube video earlier today on the very first steps that you need to be successful, in my opinion, in real estate investing. Um, there's a lot of different ways to be successful. There's a lot of different things people will tell you, but I went over the three main ways that I think you can set yourself up for success. Um, a lot of them is more mindset and things like that, but you can do it with little to no money. So what you do is use hard money lenders, private money lenders, and bank funding. Those are the three main sources that you use. Um, and you just got to get to know them. Get to know them by joining your local real estate investing Facebook groups, joining your local real estate investing meetups, following me here on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram's out there somewhere, following me on all those platforms, all the free information I give away, as well as following other people that give away good information and are actually investing as well. If you're on TikTok, if you want to, if you want to answer your question, go over to YouTube and ask it. You can stay here if you want, but go to YouTube and ask the question if you'd like. All right. Sorry about that little. Um, so that's what you can do is little, no money. And I can only articulate as much as I can right now um, without graphics, without music, without all the fun stuff that Anna does. Um, so go to my YouTube after this and, and scroll through the videos. I talk about how to flip with no money out of pocket, how to rent with no money out of pocket and how to wholesale with no money out of pocket. There's a video for every question that's been asked on here because I get asked them so much. So go there and check those out after this. What do you recommend the first step to get in real estate for a complete beginner? I told you I could ask those questions a lot. Um, so the first step would be to um, get involved in your local community um, without, you know, I guess I got this video coming out next week. That's going to be pretty cool, I think. But get involved in your local community is the first step. Join your local Facebook groups and your meetups. Yeah, the Facebook groups used to be a little bit better. Now there's like scammers and a bunch of knuckleheads in there, but there's still good people. I'm involved in um, and my entire team is in all the local real estate investing Facebook groups. So there are legit people and legit members in those groups. So make sure you're going to those groups and joining and poking around a little bit. Then go to your local meetups. I did this earlier in the video. I'm going to do it now. Wouldn't it be nice if you could go somewhere and meet wholesalers to buy houses from, real estate agents to buy houses from and list your house, insurance agents to insure your houses, hard money lenders to loan you the money on your houses, um, uh, you know, banks to loan you the money on your rentals, contractors to do siding work, to do roofing work, to do landscaping. Wouldn't it be nice to go to one place and meet all those people? Well, they exist. It's called local real estate investing meetups. Our local one is Fast House Buyers Club. It's on the third Thursday of every month. So if you're in St. Louis or within driving distance, April 15th, next Thursday, you should definitely come out. We pay for dinner, um, cash bar, and amazing presentations and networking. That's what they usually are in most cities. A decent sized city is going to have those meetups. Okay. So go to meetup.com and look at those meetups and get to know people in your market. You can't do this alone. You're going to need someone to hire things. You're going to need someone to borrow money from. You're going to need someone to insure your properties. You're going to need someone to work on your properties. So you meet all those people at those local meetups. So join those local meetups is the very first step and those Facebook groups. And then obviously make sure you're following me on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, all our platforms. I appreciate it very much. Um, I know we're missing some questions. I'll try to get to them as much as I can. Um, uh, what is the best way to locate good investment property? So I just kind of alluded to it a little bit. The best way to locate uh, good investment properties, in my opinion, um, there's two main ways to do it. One is to pay for it, pay for marketing, um, create a website, do Google AdWords, do Facebook ads, send, send direct mail, drive for dollars. There's that way. The other way is networking, getting to know people that will sell you the house. They do the hard work. Yeah, you might have to pay them a few grand fee for doing it, but they do all the legwork and you just go ahead and buy the house from them at your numbers at a good discount. Probably go with option two for most of you out there that don't want to start this whole system and process and marketing type of, um, you know, type of whatever type of process, type of system, type of business. It's a whole business you have to start. Um, you can't send a thousand pieces of direct mail and get a buy. You got to spend a thousand pieces for six months and then you start to get by. So that can get expensive. So if you don't have the money or time to do it, network, go to those meetups I just talked about. Talk to real estate agents. We bought over 100 houses last year, over 100 houses without spending a dime in um, marketing by buying from wholesalers, real estate agents, and other people in the industry. Um, so that's what I would say to start to do. Again, all these answers are on my um, other YouTube videos. How do you learn the, run the numbers to find profitable rental property? So that, that's a great question. So you're going to have to learn those numbers just by trial and error. Um, I have YouTube videos on it. Um, I know whiteboard behind me. Eventually, we're going to make these lives. We just started again. 
you know, hence the kind of low numbers, but we appreciate every single one of you for being on here. We're going to have this to where we can kind of rotate this over and I can go on a whiteboard and answer questions and talk about that. But basically when you're analyzing a rental property, you need two things, especially with the BRRRRS method, which like I said, I talk about a lot on my um, YouTube channel. But the two things you really need to um, know is you need to make sure there's enough equity in it. Make sure you're buying it at enough of a discount so that there's enough equity in the deal. And then also make sure that it cash flows. Those are two important things. You can buy a property with a ton of equity that doesn't cash flow. So sell that if you do that, but you, it needs to cash flow as well. So um, you look at cash flow by looking at what it rents for minus all expenses is, is actually your real net cash flow. So making sure it cash flows, make sure it has enough um, of an ARB, it makes sure it has enough equity and you're buying it at enough of a discount is key. Hey, Dick Dog, head over to YouTube, Faster Freedom, if you wanna ask a question. All right, do you need good credit? I'm 22, so I don't really have any right now. All right, that's a great question. Question is, do you need good credit to do this? Yes and no. So I would work on your credit if you're 22. I would definitely um, have videos on this and so do other people. I would definitely start to build your credit. Um, there's several things you can do. Open up a credit card, um, just to pay, use a little bit of it every month, 30% of your credit limit and pay that off direct, you know, directly pay it off every single month. Never don't pay it. That'll start to build credit. You become an authorized user on somebody else's account. That'll help start to build credit. So build your credit right now. Start right now. You will be, you don't have to have credit for real estate investing, but it makes life and real estate investing a lot easier. So if you, that's what you should start to get credit. If you don't have credit right now, so what you need to do um, is start to build it, but then also you can wholesale or fix and flip. You can't really do rentals with no credit because a bank's gonna wanna see your credit score, but private money lenders, I don't know one that's ever looked at, a cre at, at my credit score or anybody I know's credit score, I'm sure they're out there. And then hard money lenders um, will sometimes look at your credit score, sometimes they won't. There are no credit check, no background check, hard money lenders, but obviously there's a lot out there that want to see your credit score. And again, I, I have a YouTube video, all these questions, we just recorded a YouTube video on them today. So they're going to be out next week ish, um, talking about all this stuff. So, um, start to build your credit. And then in the meantime, either, uh, fix and flip or wholesale. Wholesaling needs zero credit. You, you never have to close on one property ever if you wholesale the right way. Um, so you don't need credit for if you're not going to close on a property. Or the third option kind of that I didn't mention would be partnering with someone with, with good credit, either a parent or an older sibling or a friend or an uncle or somebody that has good credit and is interested in investing with you. So what you can do, your options there are partner with them and do a few deals while you build your credit. Let's say in two years, your credit's up and you have six rentals. You can either continue to partner with them because it worked out great or just have six rentals with that person and then go off on your own. Um, so it's kind of a trial and error almost for that partnership. You bring the hard work, you bring the knowledge, they bring the money and or credit. Be a great partnership. Partner, the best partnerships are ones that, you know, you're each not providing the same value. What's going on? All right, what other questions we got? I'm answering, if you don't know, I'm answering questions on YouTube right now. So head to my YouTube if you want to answer me to answer your questions. So I know I've missed a few. I apologize. It's just kind of part of it. I'm starting, where would you start? Wholesale, rentals, Airbnb. So great question. So how to start is a different question than where do you start? Um, so I think you need to consider two things if you're starting investing in real estate. Two things um, I think you need to consider to make your decision on where to go. They are your long-term goals and your short-term cash position. What does that mean? If your long-term goals are rentals, then start buying rentals. There's no reason you have to wholesale or fix and flip first. My first four or five deals were rentals because that was my long-term goal. Um, the other side of the coin is if you don't have any cash, it's nice. To, I had some cash in the bank, not a 10, probably, you know, three to five grand in the bank when I started. So I had a little bit to back to go in to, you know, use. And I was building that up to, um, you know, having the bank as a backbone in case something went south. Um, so you, it's nice to have a little bit of money, but if so, if your long-term goals are rentals and you have a little bit of money, buy freaking rentals. Um, there's actually three parts of this. The other part is your short-term cash position. If you literally have a hundred dollars in the bank, I would probably wholesale um, a property or two or fix and flip a property or two using private money. Um, in order to get somewhat of a slush fund, somewhat of a, um, you know, a little bit of a reserves, I guess is the word I was looking for as I'm looking at everything, a um, little bit of reserves. Uh, so I would at least have a little bit. So the last part of it is there's nothing to say you have to just do one. There's no reason why you can't be working on your first Burrs deal by rehab rent refinance scale. There's no reason you can't be working on that and come across another property that doesn't work. Your contractors are busy, wholesale that thing off. If you find a good deal, make 10 grand wholesaling it off because you found the deal or the deal came to you. So there's no reason you have to just pick one, but look at your short-term goals and your long-term cash position. Is that a good answer, Anna? Great. All right. Um, 
All right. What other questions do you do you have on here? I don't have a job. I'm 22. Have savings and investment. How do I get a loan? All right. So it's a little bit hard to get a loan without a job. Um, you can get a private money loan and some hard money loans without a job, but a bank will not give you a loan to you um, without a job. Now, if you don't want to do rentals, then that's the only reason you'd ever use a bank is for rental property. So if you want to fix and flip or wholesale, you don't need um, a credit or you don't need a job. Um, but if you do want to rental or maybe hold a, a, a flip and hold it and fix it up and sell it and actually close on it, you probably will need a job to get funded from most hard money lenders, but not all. So just know where to look. I um, mean, obviously then, then work on that job, but it sounds like you're 22, you're young, you got a lot going for you um, and, and you potentially just get that job. And I think that would, that would help a lot. So we'll keep going here for a few more minutes. Thanks. Thanks for being on here. If you haven't liked this video, please do. We're going to start to go live every Wednesday at two o'clock central on YouTube every single week. We're going to go live and do this. Um, We'll have everything buttoned up a little bit more. I said that last week, but um, we'll have everything buttoned up a little bit more. Instead of going live seven minutes late, we went live three minutes late. So we're getting better. We'll have it to where um, where it'll be a little bit more of a, of a process. So I appreciate the like. So what other questions do we have up there? Can you scroll up in? I think I answered. Oh, oh, there's another one on there at the bottom. I got it. Um, all right. Is it good to idea to get a small person to a small personal to secure it in initial cash on hands? I don't think it's a bad idea to get. I think you're asking about a, a small personal like line of credit or something. I don't think it's a bad to ever have access to funds. You never want to have um, limited access. You always want to have multiple funding sources. I'm always would always be looking for multiple hard money lenders and multiple private money lenders and multiple banks and credit unions to use. I would always be looking for those. Um, so I would say it's okay to have personal line of credit. That can be part of that. Just all, uh, always have initial funding sources. So. Um, how do you look and find deals? So we spend about $25,000 a month in marketing, but that's only half of our buys. The other half come from networking with real estate agents and wholesalers. I'm always going to tell you to push you to do that because that is the best place to go. Um, I saw a question here from St. Scotty. I saw in one of your TikToks that you were looking at Airbnbs now. How would you suggest Burrs to? It seems like most great Airbnbs would be properties you would be able to. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm not doing Airbnbs yet. I am going looking into them as a business and at, for personal um, as well. So I'll have a little bit more uh, data and analysis to give you as I go through that over the next year or two. But um, yeah, you can burst it if you're buying enough of discount and, and, and it's working. You can definitely uh, burst it out. Um, However, yes, I would think most Airbnbs you're going to buy, put 20% down. Um, it's going to be a little bit different of a route. You can use private lens for that. Probably not hard money lenders, but um, either your own funds or private lenders for those Airbnbs, in my opinion, on that. Make sure to like this video if you haven't. Um, thank you for being here. All right. So thank you. Sorry we did not get to all the questions. Um, I'm going to do this every Wednesday going forward, 2 o'clock Central for 20 to 30 minutes. So thank you for being here. I appreciate you very much. Make sure you subscribe to my TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Instagram. And as a thank you, go to freerentalwebinar.com for my free 85 minute webinar on how to build a rental portfolio um, using other people's money and just kind of in real estate investing in general. So hopefully I'll see you on the live next week at two o'clock central. In the meantime, we got released videos Monday and Friday at 345 central. So make sure that you hit the notification bell if you haven't. So you get notified when those videos come out and when I go live so you can get on and answer and, or ask questions and I can answer them. So appreciate you being here. Have a good rest of your Wednesday. Beautiful. All right. Thank you for being here, TikTok, as always.